Hey everybody, I'm here with my uh, 2009 Nissan Cube. I uh, just bought it for about $3,000. Pretty clean inside. Um, belonged to some uh, young girl, I don't know, mid 20s, almost 30 years old. And she took pretty good care of it. I mean, she put 190,000 miles on it. And um, it's a pretty nice, fun car. I mean, for as small as it looks, it's got a lot of room inside. And I was always a XP, a uh, Scion XP fan, you know, ever since they came out in the early 2000s. But um, Nissan came out with the Cube in 2009. It was released in Japan, I think in 1999. But it took a long time, 10 years, to come out here to the United States. And, um, you know, the Scion XB, the Ford Flex, and the Honda Element are the first little boxy vehicles that came out on the market. And it took 10 years, you know, this guy from Japan to make it here to the United States. So by the time it came out, you know, that boxy look was already kind of going out of style, you know. So, but I've seen it, I drove it, I got in, it's pretty clean, pretty roomy, saves a lot of gas, I get about 31 miles to the gallon, so I figured the best thing uh, to do is uh, take care of it. But the number one t thing is uh, the CVT transmission, I'm not a big fan of that, I've never heard of it till now, and the one thing with these cars, it was pretty common, is uh, the transmission seems to uh, break down uh, thermal breakdown and it's a shame when you see them on offer up in uh, marketplace and all the other places that it's a complete car and they're selling it but the transmission is gone and it's a lot of money to spend on a car if it's going to happen again so I found a solution they sell a small little radiator that it's mounted right up in the front I mean I was thinking of putting it here right through this vent there and uh, you get the transmission fluid to run through that and then send it back to transmission and it keeps it a lot cooler, extends the life of the transmission. And I bought it from um, Amazon and I'm about to put it in. I'm not looking forward to taking this bumper off and everything else that I have to take off from inside, but I'm gonna go right through uh, this video pretty quick. So just to give you an idea what it is, all right? Let's see how it goes. So this is the little radiator that I bought from um, Amazon. It's by Evil Energy. You can buy it for about 46, 47 bucks. And uh, this is where I want to mount it. And this is what it comes with. It comes with the little grill. And it comes with a little hose. And this is about 12 by seven. You got your hose and you, you get some little um, clamps, hose clamps and some other little gadgets to attach it. And first we need to get these uh, two bolts. There's one on each side to get the front uh, uh, bumper off. You need a 10 millimeter, one on each side, take it off. And then we gotta get to the front end, which is some clips in front of the headlights and on the side of the fenders. If you just grab like something flat, not a screwdriver, something metal flat, just jam it in there carefully and just shake it around. It should come off uh, pretty easy without damaging anything. Um, I did it and it came out fairly easy. There's also two little clips that go on top and uh, It's fairly very 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 easy to do So what I wanted to do is uh, this is where I want to mount it but the other way to mount these it comes with some little Plastic clips. I don't know what you call them that they go right through the radiator and you would have to sandwich it in between the radiator and the front in order to do that, you would have to take the fans and the fan shroud out to get that those pieces, four pieces that go right through and sandwich it right between the front and the back. So I decided to just make some uh, brackets and mount it straight to the frame. And just real quick right here, this is what I made. These are two little brackets. I notched them on the side to keep it away from that radiator. And they're mounted straight to the frame with some self-tappers. I ran the line, one to the bottom and one through that little plastic compartment and straight into the engine. So all I got to do is get to the top and just uh, pull those uh, hoses through. Uh, there's a little bit of space, about an inch and a half uh, between the 
radiator and the uh, other radiator, so it'll get some airflow in there. It'll be nice and uh, it's pretty sturdy, pretty strong. It shouldn't be any problem. So let's get to the top. And this is uh, after I put the bumper back, and this is what it looks like. Right through that griddle there, you should get some airflow. So the other thing that we need to do once you get into the engine, uh, we need to take the intake air intake out, the battery needs to come out, and also the filter and all the rest of the stuff that's on top. And we need to get to a plate that the battery, you know, it's under the battery. We need a battery plate there. We need to take all that off, and then once you get that off, then you have access to the oil cooler, the transmission oil cooler. So I've got all the bolts out, move all this electrical that's mounted onto the bracket. And when you get that plate off, once you get it off, you'll have access to that uh, oil cooler, which is down there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's a very hard position to be looking. So just move some of the stuff around to get to the hoses down there. And this is where we need to get. There's two hoses that are coming out of the transmission, which is smaller ones on the cooler. And it's kind of difficult, but those two bolts right there, that's where those lines come out of. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll show you right now with a quick diagram of what needs to be done. And uh, it's pretty simple. It's very, very simple. So once you look at the cooler, You'll see here on number seven and number eight, the smaller lines are the ones that you need to attach. It okay, to. I made a little diagram here. Make it uh, try to make it simple. Hope it's not too confusing. We got four components here. We got the transmission. We got a radiator with the coolant that goes straight to the oil cooler transmission oil cooler, and we have the new little griddle uh, that we're gonna adapt right in the front of the trans um, radiator. So. What we need here is one line. That's all we need. We have two hoses here, and all we need is one in and one out. Same thing with the transmission. You're going to have two lines. One line comes out straight to the transmission fluid cooler. There's four, there's four hoses here. The two larger one, which is this one here, we're looking at it from the top. This is what you're going to see. We need to get to the little one that's below it. So that one and this one down here is the uh, transmission. Uh, this actually comes from the radiator. The larger ones are the radiator. So you don't have to touch those. Don't even worry about those. There's a one that's on the side here. And that one there, it's closer to the driver's side. That one, don't worry about that one. This one here below that water line is the one that we need. It's easier access. It's less of a hassle to take the clamps and the hoses out. So we're gonna take this line here. This line is going straight to the cooler and it's gonna be coming out here. That's the one that we wanna get to. And instead of going back to the radiator, we're gonna reroute it, drink it through the griddle, back and forth, come out and send it a lot cooler back into the transmission. That's all we need, just one line. That line right there is the one that we want. And that should do it. I know it's a little confusing, but gives you an idea of what you're dealing with. Okay, seems like I put everything back together. It's quite a bit of work. I've spent about, I mean, all together, I would say it's about eight hours, you know. You know, taking a little break here and there. There's quite a bit of work to do, but it's uh, going to be well worth it. If it's going to extend the life of the transmission, it's going to get this car keeping cooler. It should uh, work uh, pretty good. But I put everything back together. I took her for a drive. She's running good. Um, when you put this uh, new little radiator in, I recommend that you put a little extra oil because that new uh, radiator and the lines that you're adding on is going to lower your uh, transmission fluid. So you're going to have to add a little bit more for that. Compensate for what is it? What else is gonna take? But it's mounted in. I can't really tell the difference if it's cooler. But I took it on the freeway. It's not a very hot day today, so I can't really tell. But it didn't overheat, which is a good thing. And that is the main thing. So I feel a little more comfortable with the fact that it's um, running a little cooler. 
and I can take it in a long